Welcome yeah. back. Dr Julie Smith is here answering your anxiety concerns. Julie, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Good to me. see you. Let's go to, to our you. first caller, uh, who is Lisa in Essex. Hello, Lisa. Hi, hi. Hey, Lisa. Hello. So, hi. thanks for calling in, Lisa. This is about the school holidays, is that right? Yes, it is, yes. OK. Yes. Well, uh, over to you. Um, I've, well, I've suffered with anxiety for 20-plus years. Yeah. Um, my youngest daughter is autistic, so and um, I, I absolutely dread the holidays because I know there's going to be a lot of meltdown flare-ups, and with myself, my anxiety is already... I can already feel it flaring up. I can yeah. feel it building. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just after some advice of what I could do, really. Sure. What oh, else? So, I mean, there's a few, que uh, lots of questions in my mind, really, because you said about having anxiety for sort of 20 odd years. So it sounds yes. like there's a much bigger picture there to consider. Yes, but also yes. there's this sort of anticipatory anxiety, isn't it? That you know it's coming, yes. you know yes. it's stressful and, and you're sort of churning that over in the lead up yes. to it. How long have you yes. got until, is it a couple of weeks until she's off? Uh, the last day is uh, next Thursday, so a little over a week left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and you're worrying and worrying and churning all those thoughts over. Yes. Building up. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think that sort of worry convinces us that we need to be doing that and we need to be worrying about it. And actually what we're doing is triggering that anxiety over and over again. So do you notice mm. that anxiety getting more and more? Definitely. I am getting more palpitations, more tightening in my chest, more uh, the, the sleepless nights are becoming even, you know, even more frequent, frequent. So I'm waking up a lot more than what I normally do anyway. So all the symptoms that I struggle with anyway are, are increasing yeah. because I know what's coming. Yeah. And the thing is that that feeling is not something that's wrong with you, it's, it's a sign. And if we were to see it as a sign or a, a signal of something or maybe an unmet need, what do you imagine that would be a sign of? It's a difficult question, but I guess mm. I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, you've got this, this six week stretch out in front of yeah. you where yeah. you're gonna be under lots of pressure and you're yeah. gonna be working really, really hard. Do you have any support around you to, to cope with it? Uh, my husband walks, works full time, and uh, so apart from my husband, really, no, okay. no. And, and so I think sometimes we can, when we feel anxious about something, we can tell ourselves it's something we're getting wrong, that, that we shouldn't mm. be feeling that way. But from what yeah. I can see, you've got a really, really difficult situation you're trying to deal with. And so yeah. that stress is there because it's telling you we need something, this is too much. There are lots of demands placed on me. And so yes. I'm worrying about whether or not I can manage it. And, yes. and so I think sometimes then we focus in on trying to make the feeling go away. Whereas the, the sort of more helpful process would be to focus on, okay, here's a really difficult situation. I know it's triggering stress in me. That shows me that I need to work out which bits of the situation I can control and maybe change to help me and which bits I can't control, in which case I need to focus on soothing my way through that and acknowledging this is just really tough. So yeah. I mean, it might be a conversation you have with your husband about this is a really difficult time for us. What can we do to help ourselves? Where can we seek support? Where can we make some changes? And where do we have to accept that there's, there's not many changes we can make? Mm. Does that make sense? It does, yes, yes, yeah. So yeah, really, it makes sense. Really tough situation, though, and, and it, lots yeah. to do. Yeah, but I think if it, it's really important that you don't uh, sort of tell yourself that it's something you're getting wrong because you feel anxious. See that feeling as a sign that here's a difficult situation. Let's look yeah. at the situation and control what we can control. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Good luck, Best Lisa. Best of luck yeah. with that. Thank you so much for calling, Lisa. Uh, we're going to go to Jazz now in West Yorkshire. Good morning, Jazz. Good morning. Hello, Jazz. Good morning, Jazz. What Hi. would you like to talk to Julie about? I get social anxiety, especially around um, weddings, religious occasions, and especially when my sisters are coming up. To the extent that sometimes I blatantly lie to get out of social situations. 
Okay. So, yeah, I think the line was a bit sketchy there, but uh, she gets social Thank anxiety. God. No, no, don't be silly. Um, it gets bad with the family visiting, social and religious gatherings. She dreads social occasions as she worries about being sat next to someone and not having anything to say. So what can mm. we suggest for Jazz? That's really common with social anxiety, you know, that, that fear of silence and not knowing what's the best thing to say or not being entertaining enough and, and those sorts of things. And, and there's this real focus an inward focus for social anxiety. So your mind is going to, how am I coming across? How are other people perceiving me? How am I sitting, standing, moving, talking? What am I getting wrong? And it's this real sort of attack on the self. And, and the distinct difference, in, in the research it shows that the distinct difference between that social anxiety picture and a more confident picture is that when people feel more confident socially, their focus is outwards. So uh, something that I'll always do, I mean, obviously these things are a much bigger picture and there is lots of different work to be done on this, but one really quick thing that you can think about is shifting that focus from that inward focus to how are people perceiving me, what am I doing wrong, to what do I want to hear about other people? So that yeah, thing about, you know, uh, what am I going to say? I've got to have something good to say. Actually focus on what are you curious about? Finding out about, you know, it's your sisters and your family. Uh, what do you want to catch up on? What, you know, maybe you want to know about their recent holiday or maybe someone in your family you're concerned about and you want to talk about that. And, and focusing on curiosity and questions and, and what you want to, how you want to connect with those people. And when that focus is outward and towards other people, you can't also be self-conscious at the same time. So it's a, a sort of catch yourself when you know you're focusing inwards, shift that perspective to focusing on, okay, how do I be curious about the other people in the room? What do I want to know about them? How Maybe you could have some questions them? that you might want to ask as well. That's a great one is have a list yeah. even, yeah, that you can pull from. Jazz, does that sound Such good? Such great advice. That sounds really good. Thank Doesn't you so it? much. Hey, pleasure, Jazz. You can become an interviewee. Just yeah. start and, <laughs> like, interviewing people. Yeah. Nice yeah. one. Thanks, Jazz. Thank you. Uh, Brenda is next in Liverpool. Hello, Brenda. Hey, yeah. Hello, Brenda. How are you doing? I'm all right. Not You're too right. bad. Well, thanks for calling yeah. in. What would you like to ask Julie, Brenda? Um, what it is, Julie, I've been suffering with anxiety for uh, since I was, like, 18, and I'd like to be able oh. to travel abroad. Yeah. Um, every time I go abroad, uh, it's, it's a horrible experience for me um, with with my anxiety. What are you anxious you know, about, particularly, um, uh, Brenda? Is it I know the travel this or really, this sounds really? I, I feel like it's because it's so far away from home. Yeah. And I feel like I just need to when I, when I'm so far away, I just feel like I want to run back, and I, it's horrible. I'm hyperventilating. I'm I, I get palpitations, yeah. I'm sweating, and it's just a horrible experience when it's supposed to be a relaxed experience. Sure. It doesn't yeah. sound silly at all. What do you, no, what do you reckon? No, absolutely. And, and do you still continue to do holidays? And have you, you booked something? Uh, I haven't because it's, it's, I try as much as I, I, I try and think, fight me, feel me fear and do it anyway. Mm. But I just, it's every time it's so... Um, scary for me, it's terrifying. Yeah. Can I, can I ask, because sometimes you would feel anxious about something and say, OK, well, I'm never going to do that again. But you've rung yeah. in today, which suggests to me that it's sort of important to you to go on holidays. Yeah, I, need, I feel like I need help with it. But yeah. I just don't know where to turn to the best. Why, why is it important to you to be able to travel? Because I'd like to, you know, the way, you know, the, the, when you're working and... You know, you just need to, like, wind down and things like that. It's yeah. important, I think, to get that, you know, like, as we say, change as good as a rest. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, and, 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 and see the world and see nice places like everyone else does. There we go. It makes me really feel like, you know, I'm missing out on life. It's life's passing me by because, you know, I'm 52 and it's ruined yeah. every time I've gone away. And, and the thing is, I, although we're obviously short on time today, if I yeah, was sat yeah. with you for an hour, I would keep going with that because uh, what you need to do is not eradicate the anxiety, but give yourself enough of a reason to tolerate that anxiety for doing it. So really go into depth and list all the reasons why it's so important to you to travel and have that time yeah. so that you're yeah. willing to feel that anxiety and go anywhere. You don't have to eradicate the feeling. You have to have a really good reason that matters to you more than being comfortable. So the juice is worth the squeeze, right? So, yeah. You know, yeah. You, I could say it like that. Are you that. OK for you just hang around and maybe because we run out of time of course, yeah. to speak on the phone? Yeah. Brenda, stay on the line, OK? And Julie, Thanks, come and talk Julie. to you, all right? 
Thank you. Because we need so you much. to have that holiday, young lady. Also, yes, you sound like you. the life and soul of the party, so I feel like you need to share yourself about a bit yeah. and get around the world so we can experience yeah. you and have some yeah, fun the with light you. Of you know Brenda. What I mean? Come on. Maybe I could come yeah, with you. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. Thanks, Brenda. Thanks, Brenda. Thanks. And thank you so much, Julie. Thanks, Julie. Right. Thank you, Julie. Always good to see you. All right, still.